When it comes to mysteries of the universe or explaining how the universe works, neutron stars have always been at the forefront, specifically both at providing new mysteries and at helping us resolve some of the unusual observations from across the universe. For example, how several elements such as gold and platinum can be created through collision of neutron stars. Or how certain mysterious emissions such as the iconic fast radio bursts could possibly be produced through a very unusual interaction of a neutron star with something in its surrounding. And so because of this, a lot of different theoretical physicists usually focus on neutron stars and the math behind them in order to help us understand everything around us. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to talk about several different studies that potentially help us explain a few different mysteries, including fast radio bursts, and also help us understand what happens to certain neutron stars in certain conditions when they end up colliding with one another and instead of producing a black hole can actually create something a little bit different. The object the scientists refer to as a magnetically supermassive neutron star. An object that could only exist for maybe a few years but could potentially create a lot of different signals we're observing around the universe but cannot currently explain. And so how exactly does this work and what exactly do the scientists propose here? Well, first of all, we know that a typical neutron star, a lone neutron star, is usually produced during some kind of a supernova of a star that's not really massive enough to produce a black hole, but is more massive than a star that would usually end up as a white dwarf. In this case, when it's a binary system and there are two massive stars, in some cases, this can actually result in two different neutron stars in orbit around one another. But, in some cases, these two neutron stars can actually end up really close to one another and start interacting and at some point collide. And this event has been officially confirmed a few years ago through the detection of gravitational waves coming from two objects that were not massive enough to be black holes but were more massive than what you would call a white dwarf. With the objects very likely producing some kind of a black hole as a result and at least one event also resulting in what's known as a hypernova, an extremely bright event visible from a very, very far away distance. Back then, this was also a confirmation that a lot of gold and a lot of uh, elements like platinum are also produced during these very powerful collisions. And today it's believed that most of the gold, if not all of the gold, is actually produced this way. But it was also believed that these types of collisions will normally result in the production of a black hole, and this black hole is most likely going to be almost completely invisible with all of this relying on a very interesting concept known as tolman oppenheimer volkov limit. The limit of the mass of a typical neutron star. Now, interestingly enough, it's not really that well known. As a matter of fact, the math behind it is pretty complex. And so unlike the chenery zucker limit for white dwarfs, which states that once a typical white dwarf reaches the mass of about 1.3 masses of the sun, it's going to go supernova, for neutron stars, this mass is very, very roughly defined, anywhere between 2.2 and 2.9 masses of the Sun. And it would also only apply to neutron stars that are not spinning, and most neutron stars spin ridiculously fast. And for a spinning neutron star, this limit can increase by up to about 20%. And so even today, this particular limit and its value is not really known. But one of the previously detected neutron star collisions, such as the one you see right here, known as GW170817, detected in 2017, suggested that this limit is about 2.3 masses of the Sun, with the original star being anywhere from 15 to 20 solar masses, suggesting that if a neutron star reaches the mass of 2.4, 2.5, and so on, masses of the Sun, it then goes supernova, producing a small, very highly charged black hole in its place. But even here, there are quite a lot of discrepancies and quite a lot of mysteries based on the observations of neutron stars from around our own galaxy. For example, in the past, several neutron stars have already been identified and confirmed, but at the moment, nothing with the mass of over 2.8 masses of the Sun. The record holder right now seems to be this pulsar you see right here, located in a global cluster. Its mass is about 2.7 masses of the Sun. Then, on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the smallest black hole detected. In this case, it's also from gravitational wave detections back in 2019, and it's a black hole known as GW190425. The total mass of this black hole is approximately 3.3 masses of the Sun. 
And in between that, we have some very unique and somewhat exotic objects, such as the famous SS433. This is a binary system that's pretty well known to scientists, but nobody is entirely sure what exactly it is. It could be a black hole, it could be a neutron star, or it could be some other exotic object. It's known as the most exotic star in the galaxy. And it also is an object that produces a lot of anomalies. An older video on the channel, somewhere right there or in the description, explains a little bit more about this particular object. And the mass here could be up to about three masses of the Sun, so it's basically somewhere in between the smallest black hole and the biggest neutron star. And so it's kind of been previously suggested that it could be some kind of a neutron star that's just spinning extremely fast, because it's believed that if a neutron star spins really, really, really fast, almost at its limit, the rotation itself can prevent it from collapsing into a black hole until the spin slows down. Or in other words, the centrifugal acceleration in this case prevents the gravity from basically collapsing the neutron star and creating a black hole. But the scientists behind this study propose something entirely different, and they propose something that could maybe explain several observations and several mysteries in regards to various magnetic neutron stars. They suggest that a neutron star does not have to spin very fast in order to stay stable for at least a few years, and it might even not collapse into a black hole and be really, really massive, more massive than its limit would allow, if instead of a spin it possessed an extremely powerful magnetic field, such as what you would expect from a typical magnetar. And so in this case, if a collision between two neutron stars ends up creating a single object with a very, very powerful magnetic field, it can actually stay as a neutron star for at least a few years, with the magnetic field in this case providing the support preventing the neutron star from collapsing further. And in this case, this unusual magnetic neutron star with time will start losing its energy. And because of the diffusion of energy from its poles, it's slowly going to transform from releasing gamma rays and x-rays to releasing low power energy, including of course radio waves. And when the energy is no longer released, that's when it goes supernova and collapses into a black hole. And more importantly, if such a star existed, they also provide several different ways we could potentially find these stars. Because they would actually produce very specific types of emissions, and what's interesting is that one of their predictions kind of suggests that these emissions would be similar to what we usually refer to as FRBs, fast radio bursts the bursts that represent one of the bigger mysteries in modern astronomy and that are usually associated with very highly magnetic objects, with at least one burst coming from our own galaxy already corresponding to a very well-known magnetar that is also known to produce X-ray bursts. And so could this really be how FRBs are produced? But in their paper they go through a little bit more detail, suggesting that other signals should be detectable as well if these objects truly exist. For example, there should also be very unique signatures consisting of quick gamma ray bursts and quick X-ray bursts. At least during the initial stages of the existence of these neutron stars right after their collision. With all of these powerful emissions eventually changing into radio emissions, as the gravity field of the neutron star takes over and as it starts to sort of fade and slowly turn into a black hole. With the final collapse also releasing some type of energy as well. But currently, there is really no evidence for such fast gamma ray bursts or X-ray bursts, so we don't really know if these objects truly exist, and if any of the fast radio bursts are produced by these exotic neutron stars. And even though technically it could be detected using modern technology, the gamma ray telescopes and the X-ray telescopes are not nearly as advanced as some of the radio telescopes on the planet, so it's a little bit easier for the scientists to find fast radio bursts compared to some kind of a fast gamma ray burst that would require a completely new type of observation. But if this paper is correct, it means that certain fast radio bursts are eventually going to disappear and potentially even produce some kind of a supernova-like explosion which should be visible with modern telescopes. And since these objects are expected to exist for only a few years, it should be happening in our lifetimes. If this doesn't happen, it means that FRBs are maybe created by something entirely different. Nevertheless, a pretty exotic and pretty interesting proposition for a type of a neutron star that could maybe explain different mysteries in the universe. But when it comes to FRBs, there are so many different explanations with many actually making sense. For example, one of the most recent propositions was in regards to FRBs potentially being planets in orbit of, once again, a neutron star. 
And so at least one paper proposes that if a neutron star has a planet, and we of course know planets do exist around neutron stars, but the recent video that you can find right there or in the description explaining this in more detail, if planets have an orbit that's not circular, and if they do actually come relatively close to the neutron star, they might go through a typical tidal disruption process when an object starts to fall apart next to a very dense, very massive object such as a black hole and a neutron star. And as this planet starts to lose some of its mass, and starts to become tidally disrupted by this object, some of the material from the planet might end up crashing onto the pulsar itself, onto the neutron star. With this material then creating the observations we see, as some of these clumps, as they interact with the neutron star, produce various types of emissions because of the ridiculously powerful collisions. And if some of these clumps pass through what's known as the stellar wind, or through some of the magnetically charged particles produced by this neutron star, they'll actually start releasing very powerful radio waves as a result. So this is maybe one other way FRBs or various radio emissions from neutron stars could be produced as well. And in this case, by running calculations of famous fast radio bursts that do repeat, the scientists discovered that it also makes sense if it was just a planet creating this. So once again, another potential explanation, but nothing definitive just yet. But as I mentioned in the beginning, neutron stars seem to be the source and the potential solution to many different mysteries of the universe. Mysteries that in time we're hoping to be able to answer through thorough observations and various studies involving various neutron stars we've already discovered. And so until new studies or until new mysteries are solved, check out some of the previous videos on this topic, including the video on pulsars and neutron stars with planets, and check out all of the relevant links and studies in the description below. Also, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.